I'm Tony Scar with BNet TV. We are here at IBC in Amsterdam in 2012. I am speaking with Entropics Anton Monk. How are you today, sir? Very good. Thank you, Tony. Excellent. Listen, fantastic conference. Continues to grow. The ecosystem continues to expand, and it's such a great conference. Yeah, we're very excited. We, uh, with some of our recent acquisitions, we really have transformed the company. Uh, we believe we're in a space where we are the only pure play company that's transforming the digital home, bringing content into the home. For example, through our single wire modules for satellite cable coming into the home, through connectivity, we're inventing one of the key standards for distributing content with inside the home, and uh, also for consuming content securely inside the home through our uh, SOC products. So, on topic, great, uh, great uh, corporation. You've been around for a while. You've been through many challenges and hurdles. So. Out of all that experience, what has it allowed you to do in this last 12 months that's really propelled you forward in the media processing, bridging home content? Well, I think that's that's the truly interesting part that's transformed the company. We, we made our name in communications and connectivity through um, the Multimedia for Coax Alliance, uh, really transforming the landscape in the U.S. and now moving into Europe as well. The Horizon product for UPC was just announced yesterday in terms of deployment. Um, Entropic is in that release actually where the, we, we provide a, a key portion of the connectivity. Uh, as I mentioned also we have uh, distribution into the house but what happened in the past five months is we acquired the set-top box unit from Trident Microsystems and really that's allowed us to be a key player in the market, in the set-top market, providing end-to-end -end connectivity inside the home. What happens when you move from sort of the um, old, uh, you know, the old-style television sets into the set-top box through to the connected TV. Well, what we're seeing is this really a paradigm shift inside the home from traditional boxes that each consume separately their own content. The next stage beyond that is uh, multi-room DVR, where you have a master DVR and they're connecting to uh, client devices that are, let's say. Uh, less full featured, less capable, but also less expensive. So they, they, to the consumer, they look the same, right? They have exactly the same capabilities, but all of the, the primary conditional access and storage is happening on a master DVR. And then that final transition to the gateway client architecture, which you see uh, in Horizon's launch, but also is happening in the US. And what's interesting there is you have these gateway products that are now going to be the main box in the house that's terminating the broadcast reception and the conditional access and then allowing distribution of IP content inside the home and that's what we're positioning ourselves for, for those client devices of which there are multiple inside the home, that's what we're really targeted towards. So one of the issues inevitably for the content providers though, is being able to uh, give and dish out the content to the end users in multiple formats. Yes, and uh, we have, a, we have a, a very advanced distributed architecture in our chip. Um, we are. We, we also believe we we have made a, a very smart choice in the uh, the processor architecture that we use, especially ARM based, and what that gives us the ability to leverage the mobile ecosystem. So the set top box market is big. That's our main market. The mobile market dwarfs anything else. Hundreds of millions of devices, tens if not hundreds of thousands of developers, web based standards that are being developed targeted towards that ecosystem, and specifically for the ARM architecture. So our solution leverages heavily off the mobile ecosystem, and we see that in new, the new architectures that are happening in the house, the new specifications for set-top boxes that are using web-based and mobile-based standards that, are, as I mentioned, are developed for that, that space and are now transitioning into the set-top box. So things like Android, things like um, HTML5, uh, the WebKit engine, uh, the graphics engines like Open Glass, uh, 3, 3D graphics, a lot of those standards are developed for that market. We're able to take solutions based on those standards and very easily implement them, allowing a very rapid time to market for our customers. I think that's the key at the end of the day. Traditionally, operators have had a difficult time getting new capabilities and new features to market compared to other ecosystems like mobile, that's going to change significantly. So I was, uh, that was sort of going to be my transition to this next question here is that what, are, what are some of those challenges that your customers are coming to you with saying, you know, we're having a problem right here, how do you help us? I think most, well, most of it really is in the software. Uh, to implement new capabilities and new features on legacy platforms takes a long time. Interoperability is a key issue. So that's why we see operators now leveraging uh, or taking advantage of open standards or, in or industry standards. They don't have to be completely open. They could be things like uh, um, uh, Microsoft uh, Smooth Streaming sure. or Play Ready or you know, some of the industry standards that are out there that are well accepted and that have interoperability 
uh, among many different types of devices. That's what we see transitioning into the set-top space. Um, and is there any sense of um, uh, Kodak wrapping that you inevitably have issues with? Is there, I mean, there's, a, you know, going around the show floor, we're seeing lots of different technologies. There doesn't seem to be yet a standard in DAS. There doesn't seem to be a, a standard in some certain areas that inevitably the content provider, when they're pushing it through to the platform, are going to be like, hey, well, there's an issue here. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the, the analogy is to the PC, where a PC can do everything in software, right? They don't have this problem. You can download new apps. In, in I can only talk, speak about our architecture. Yeah, we have a very uh, flexible platform. We have uh, DSP-based engines. We have hardware-based uh, decode engines. We can flexibly handle anything that's being thrown at us at this point, both from an audio codec standpoint as well as video. Um, so we, we have no issue both with the codec development as well as some of the new features that are coming at new requirements like power management. Yep. Power so management power management has become a key issue both in Europe but also more recently with the Department of Energy. Um, we have a separate power management processor. We have complete flexibility of shutting down different parts of our chip to meet whatever needs come up. So that's an example of how our architecture is able to adapt to the needs of the operators as they evolve. Um, Anton, do you feel like there's, a sh there's any sort of one pocket around the globe that is advancing faster than another? In general, in terms of different types of ecosystems, yeah, or in terms of set-top boxes? More, more geography bound. Uh, if you talk about the set-top market, I think the consensus a few years ago was that U.S. was in the order of one or two years ahead of Europe. But and although the Horizon product has been delayed, it's now finally launched, and that's a very advanced architecture. So I think um, as, as that architecture evolves um, and gets deployed to other geographies within Europe, that there's a lot more parity between the technology capabilities or the technology rollouts that are happening in the setup world from a gateway client perspective of Europe compared to the US. And then finally, Anton, what are we going to see from Entropic here uh, throughout the next 12 months? Well, we're, uh, I'd like to show you some, uh, some things yeah. that I just spoke about. Yeah. Um, we're, we're heavy believers in Android. As I mentioned, uh, we, we believe strongly in, uh, in the open standards world and, and, in, and industry standards. Um, we also have very strong supporters of HTML5. We're seeing that requirement come out from a remote user interface perspective. And what we've done in our chips is we get to um, uh, we, we leverage the hardware capabilities in our chips extensively. So uh, typically you might run a, 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 typi a tip typically you might uh, browse with video inside the main processor, but we actually offload all of our HTML5 video into our hardware pipeline. So all of our um, uh, the acceleration for video, for scaling the video, for doing the color space conversion, that's all done in hardware. Um, in addition, um, we also have deployed Android. We were actually the first uh, set-up chip company to have, yeah, to have Android deployments. This is an example of a, uh, an Android box uh, that also has satellite broadcast uh, with a wrapper around it. Um, and what we're showing up top here is the um, capability of running multiple software stacks at the same time. This is a dual uh, OS mode, which is very interesting. It allows uh, operators to have their legacy solutions, let's say a, a, a QT-based solution, which is an industry-wide standard, and at the same time deploy uh, Android as well. So we actually have Android running in the corner. We have broadcast video. We've got 3D graphics. All of these things can run at the same time, and it provides a capability to a service provider to uh, have a very quick time to market in new capabilities, either Android, HTML5, while not being that concerned about um, what's going to happen to their legacy solutions. They can maintain the sanctity of their legacy, of their, their primary solution, but they can deploy these new services very rapidly. So I just want to sort of go over this one more time, that this is the idea that you can run multifunctionality uh, throughout different areas in the home and not necessarily um, uh, lose out on the streaming signal. That's right, well, within the same chip. Right. Okay. Yeah, so you can have, for example, um, full operator support, broadcast video support, and at the same time <clears throat> have a very rapid time to market in terms of new applications uh, running alongside your traditional broadcast uh, operating system. What's the next evolution for that particular product? Well, I think in, in some cases uh, you'll have operators that will transition directly to Android. And uh, you know we, we 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 enable that. We have Android reference designs. We have operators that have actually deployed that. Um, in some geographies, that's a little harder to make that transition because there's so much invested in their current solutions or even in the next generation solutions. But it's hard to ignore what's happening in the mobile world. It's impossible to ignore what's happening in the mobile world. Um, so I don't think anybody would bet against. Uh, 
features from that world moving into the set-top box ecosystem, and we're here to enable that, and our architecture makes it very easy for application developers and operators to deploy new services and capabilities. Anton, thanks very much for taking the opportunity to speak with us here today at IBC. I hope we get a chance for an update again in the future. You're welcome. Nice day. I've been speaking with Entropics Anton Monk here at IBC in Amsterdam 2012. I am Tony Sklar with BNET TV. <laughs>